Before we get started, I'd like to make a very special announcement. To celebrate 15 years of Anime America and my 10-year wedding anniversary, Sumi and I have decided to fly to Japan for a trip of a lifetime. We'll be visiting Tokyo, Kobe, Hiroshima, Kagoshima, and Jeju Island in South Korea. We'll have just enough to pay for the trip and try to save up for other expenses. But if you would like to contribute to the trip and be featured in our Japan travel vlog, you can check out our Teespring store, YouTube membership, Patreon, Cameo, and even PayPal. All proceeds will be put aside for the trip and we'll feature your name in the video as our way of saying thank you for making this journey even more special. This is the trip I have always dreamed of having ever since I was a kid and it's finally coming true. If you'd like to help us out with this journey, links are in the description box down below. Disclaimer, the following review will be addressing sensitive topics such as guns, violence, and bloodshed, so viewer discretion is advised. But hey, if YouTube really isn't for children, then there really should be a problem, right Miss YouTube? M Miss YouTube? Welcome back, Master, to the Anime America Cafe. What's our theme, you may be asking? Why it's... We put two shots of Fireball into every drink and meal and hentai in the bathroom. There it is. Welcome back, Masters, to another episode of... What am I watching? <laughs> If you watched the Anime America Anime Awards of 2022, you would have noticed a certain show I was praising as not only my favorite anime of the year, but also as the fourth best anime of 2022. And it all involves Turf Wars with Maid Cafes. Turf Wars and Maid Cafes? With guns and explosions and gambling? And hookers? With Maid Cafes, yeah! Shit, I'd rather be there than here. Okay, but those establishments don't serve alcohol, Sumi. Oh, screw that! I'm gonna make some fireball pudding instead. Mmm, pudding. Anyways, the 2022 hit Akiba Maid War was actually an anime exclusive idea originally produced by Psy Games and PA Works. A video game company and an animation studio coming together to make an anime. Kinda makes you wonder how they came up with the idea like Akiba Maid War. I mean, let's look back at the history of maid cafes. When Akihabara was becoming a city solely made for anime fans, aka otakus, special stores were designed to attract their attention. The most notable ones were in fact cafes, and in Akihabara, every cafe had a different theme. The very first maid cafe was made in Akihabara in 2001, solely made to appease the European fantasy fans who liked the idea of being served by maids in a nice European establishment. The main gimmick is to go to the cafe, be greeted by some of the maids, get treated to all sorts of foreign treats like cakes and teas, play cute games with them, and watch a concert with their favorite maids singing and dancing. This idea blew up and became the most popular form of cafes to attend all throughout Japan, especially in Akihabara. There are hundreds of maid cafes within this district with their own themes. Victorian, kitty cats, cy cyberpunk. Sure, why not? Each of them have to create some sort of aesthetic that mixes well with their food and entertainment in order to attract customers. I mean, seriously, you can't just copy other cafes, since there really wouldn't be a point in going to yours if the other one did it first. If I were to guess, the producers over at Psy Games and PA Works probably took a look at this whole franchise like it was literally taking over the city. And with their themes and passionate attempts to get your loyal patronage, who wouldn't see this as cafes battling each other to be the best in the city? Somewhat like a made cafe war, if you will. This is what I'm guessing is to be the inspiration behind Akiba Made War. That or they watched that one video called The Dark Side of Made Cafes by YouTuber hiding in my room. And just decided to make an anime. Okay, seriously, I was doing my research when scripting this video and didn't realize that this video was a troll until I heard the sentence, committing seppuku by Frozen Baguette. <laughs> What? Regardless, the popular anime was released for the fall 2022 lineup and animated by PA Works, the same studio that brought you... Oh. Oh. Ah! 
So when you have the idea of Maid Cafe's going to war over supremacy, what could the plot be about? <laughs> Well, we're off to a great start now, aren't we? Akihabara, 1997. A young 17-year-old girl named Nagomi Wahira is excited to work her first shift as a maid at the Oinky Doink Cafe. I would say take a wild guess over what their theme is, but, um, they have a panda. It it's just there. Just chillin'. Of course you have to have a panda or two. Not usually, though. Ditsy act, huh? On the same day, though, there's another mate starting on her first day. Fresh out of prison and ready to serve. This here is the one, the only, Ronko Manen. Best girl. That's funny. You're almost 40. You're gonna hire a 35-year-old rookie? Really, Chief? Risk! Back your seniors, young lady! 35 year olds can't be made still! <laughs> oh, I'm feeling this in my bones. Even though Nagami wasn't really having a good first day, she gladly takes on a random task to deliver a message for her boss at another cafe. Ronko strangely decides to follow her just in case. In case of what you may be asking. No! Please spare me! <laughs> just chop it off already! <laughs> Gee, I really couldn't guess why. Everything just looks so normal here. I'm in danger. The message ends up angering the head of the cafe, but when she tries beating up Nagomi... when all this insanity couldn't escalate any further, the bunny mates try to chase down our girls until Ronko shoots them all down while dancing like a cutesy idol maid. Remember, this video is called What Am I Watching? Episode 1 literally sets up the show perfectly for what you are about to witness. The maid cafes operate as a syndicate working for their leaders and themes. In this case, animals versus aliens. Cute. They battle each other over customers, territory, and money while still upholding the standards of being a cute maid. So to put it simply... All they wanna do is... And, uh, and they make it look my way. All they wanna do is... And, uh, and they make it look my way. Basically, the cafe works like a mafia syndicate. From running underground casinos, to battling other factions, these maids know they're in for dirty business when they put on the costumes. And once you're in the family, there's no way out. But the big question some of you may be asking is, where is all of this going? Is this just a one-shot comedy just taking maid girls out of their comfort zone just for fun? Or is there something more to this? Surprisingly, there is an internal debate of what it really means to be a maid between Nagomi, Ronko, and everyone else. Also, despite what we're led to believe, our sweet and naive Nagomi and our guns ablazing badass Ronko honestly have a lot more in common. Naturally, one doesn't expect to become a maid and learn how to kill other maids. Obviously. Obviously. But the main question is, why is the maid cafe business like this? Well, in order to explore the insane world of Occupy Maid War, I will have to go into spoiler territory. Mainly because a lot of viewers really didn't like how the show ended. So I'm not only going to spoil the anime from here, but I'm also going to explain why I believe the ending makes perfect sense to me. Especially with the characters we have and their moral compass. All the way back in 1985, Ronko was a young maid working at a cafe where the Oinky Doink Cafe is now. It was pretty violent in those days, but Ronko chose not to pursue such behaviors, no matter how weak it made her look. While her sisters didn't really agree with her stance, her manager supported her beliefs and wanted to push towards a future where maid cafes wouldn't have to fight over supremacy. But of course... <laughs> There's no need for weak behavior in this business. This led the peace-loving maid Ronko into a path of vengeance. She accepted the reality that peace will never be in sight and decides to go on a rampage to find her manager's murderer. This led to her arrest and imprisonment for 12 years. Instead of just leaving the business for good once she's free, she returns as an older maid in the exact location of her first job. Here is where she meets the sweet and naive Nagomi, 
Like Ronko, she doesn't really want to fight or hurt anyone. She'll defend the cafe and her friends, but she won't let anyone else get hurt in the process. Even when she's being threatened, harassed, thrown into a large barrel with a lamb as it fills up with tomato juice, and all because some psycho maid didn't want to share her birthday with anyone else. Bitches be crazy. Nagumi still refuses to fight anyone. With Nagumi's persistence, Ranko chooses to be her friend, while also encouraging her to keep pushing for peace, since that was her original desire from way back when. You would think their ideals would clash with the other girls, who have been working in the Syndicate for a while now. I mean, they probably would if they actually, you know, gave a shit. This sucks. Let's finish this shit. Gosh, I haven't used a gun in ages. Seriously, Yumechi, Shippon, Zoya, and their manager Yasuko couldn't care less what they do as long as they do their job. Yasuko lazily runs the cafe while doing the bare minimum to save their asses before their leaders decide to kill them. Yumechi just wants to do her job and be the best maid at the oinky doink, but if anything gets in her way of that... <laughs> Oh wait, what's that? The head of their syndicate sent someone to clean up their cafe while making Chipong get rid of her hair and makeup in order to conform with their standards? Snap out of it and come back! Did I mention these girls really don't give a shit? They've just been doing whatever the hell they want and been surviving so far, so... Who cares? The only time they ever rise up to fight is when their cafe is in jeopardy, or whenever they want to show that they're just as good at their job at being maids like everyone else. This setup only complements Nagomi's character arc, that despite being threatened by other maids, having her sister figure die in her arms, and coming close to death numerous times, there is nothing that'll get Nagomi to change her mind. With her family at the Oinky Doink doing their best to be decent maids, Nagumi can defy the odds to show the world what being a maid is truly all about. Could you please wrap it as a gift? Ronko! Ronko! <laughs> I want to keep doing this with all of you. Ronko. Okay, first of all, how fucking dare you killing off best girl like that? Just like that! Sorry? Say no more, bitch. I'll get the guns. Secondly, while I am appalled that you just killed off the best character in the whole show, I understand why it had to happen. Ronko and Nagami were exactly the same. They had the same dream of being a sweet maid in a cafe and promote peace instead of violence. When someone close to Ronko died, she gave up on that ideal and went on a rampage to avenge her. Now that it's happened to Nagami, will she do the same? I mean, despite her efforts, these maids show no sign of changing. They're even getting worse with how they're relentlessly harassing and fighting the girls of Oinky Doink. Okay, but to be fair, they did shoot down the Bunny Girl Cafe, blew up a casino, shot up the Lamb Cafe, burned down their syndicate logo, which is the equivalent of giving the bird, and pushed their way to the top of the maid climb that was set up for the Lion Cafe to win in order to keep the status quo of their hierarchy. So you can't really say they didn't see this coming when all they ever did was mess with the system. So... With her best friends dead, and the rest of the maids showing little to no change towards peace and harmony, will Nagomi follow in Ronko's footsteps and declare vengeance? Or... Welcome home to the pigsty! We've come to slaughter you. That's great, Oinky Doink! But first, why not experience some of our love here at Oinky Doink Cafe? You shitting me? Welcome, mistresses! Today happens to be our Big Bang Lovey Dovey Heart event! Nagomi decides to put her foot down and become the maid she swore to become. She will not give in to the politics ruling over their entire enterprise. She's going to serve her masters in one final attempt at peace. No guns, no violence, no bloodshed. Let's just be maids, work in peace, and give 100% Moe Moe Kun.
It is now the present day. Akihabara is now a thriving community with several cafes working harmoniously. Old patrons of the past make their way to the Oikidoin Cafe and visit their favorite 35-year-old maid. Hello and welcome home, cute master. <laughs> she did it. Nagomi carried on the belief so many past maids dreamt of, and she made it into a reality. Rago would be so proud of you, girl! <laughs> Best girl is proud of you! So this is why I think the ending works. We've seen a few shows throwing innocent characters into uncomfortable territories as we watch them get used to their chaotic environment. And while I suppose most others would rather have this show just keep going above and beyond with an insane idea like made cafes in a mafia, I actually appreciate the message here. But also, Akiba Made War was made to be an over-the-top satire, so why not go full ham with its theme and ideals? Of course, there has to be a character like Nagami desiring to be a simple maid and wanting peace. Of course, there has to be a version just like her who had to turn away peace when she lost someone close to her. Of course, there has to be a wide variety of voices showing her in extreme exaggerations why her goals and desires are pointless. But for an over-the-top satire featuring maids killing each other over supremacy and survival, an over-the-top message about staying true to yourself and not abandoning your morals, it fits right in too. Overall, Akiba Maid War turned out to be an over-the-top roller coaster ride with a very sweet ending. It's my favorite for its themes, characters, and presentation, so I highly recommend this anime if you want to join in on the insanity. If you want to watch Akiba Maid War, you can find all of the episodes on High Dive in sub and dub. The dub for this one to me was a bit mixed between stellar voices and some bland ones, but the best ones to me were Zoya, Shippon, and Yumechi. In the end, I didn't know what to expect with an anime involving guns, violence, and cutesy maids, but Akiba Made War surprised me and definitely earned its spot in the top 5 best anime of 2022. Wow, you spoke a lot about violence and death and bloodshed, and Miss YouTube still didn't show up? Hey, you're right. Seriously, where the hell is she? I mean, I know the algorithm sucks for us, but you would think she would have made an appearance just once. Wait a minute, I know how you can get her attention. It's easy, just play some copyrighted music and that bitch will claim the video in no time. <sighs> well, now you've done it. Now I gotta fill out a claim and- Hello, I see you're filing a counterclaim in regards to your recent copyright infringement. Excuse me? The thing goes grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Uh, let me know what you thought of Akiba Maid War. Also, who's your favorite maid in the show and why is it Ronko? <laughs> I'm kidding, or am I? Leave your answers in the comments down below. And like we mentioned earlier in this video, Sumi and I are finally taking a trip to Japan. We're doing our best to put money aside in order to pay for extra activities and such, but if you'd like to contribute to the trip and have your name featured in the upcoming Japan travel vlog, check out how you can in the description box down below. Special thanks to Mikey, aka Shalane the Insane, for putting together that song for me. What can I say? I heard that song and thought of Akiba Made War. Of course I did. And as always, I like to thank our Patreon supporters for helping our channel. I don't know why uh, Mr. YouTube won't help us with this messy algorithm, but we're able to keep making the videos we want thanks to your amazing support. Thank you everyone for watching. More awesome videos will be on the way, so stay tuned to Anime America.